In the vast, cold silence of space, where time seems to stretch endlessly and the stars watch quietly from afar, something remarkable has happened. And not in a distant galaxy or a remote part of the universe, but right next door. On the surface of our moon. A recent Chinese discovery has sent a ripple across the scientific world, silenced communications, and even stirred global concern. According to a Nobel Prize winning physicist, this discovery may be far more than a scientific milestone. It could be something the world is not ready for. It all began with one of China's most ambitious space missions. The Chang'e series, named after the Chinese moon goddess, has pushed China to the forefront of lunar exploration. In recent years, the focus has been on the moon's South Pole, a location of intense scientific interest. Why? Because of its permanently shadowed craters that may hold frozen water, an invaluable resource for future colonization, and unique geological formations never before studied up close. The Chang'e 9 mission was launched with little media attention, quietly continuing China's systematic exploration of the moon's darker, deeper terrains. The lander touched down in a crater near the South Pole, and initial surface scans showed normal results. But as the rover moved further into an uncharted depression, the instruments began to register anomalies. At first, it was minor, small gravitational inconsistencies. But then, deeper down, seismic scanners picked up something strange, an object beneath the surface. This wasn't just a boulder or a metal deposit. The structure was geometric. Perfectly symmetrical. A hexagonal formation buried beneath the dust and regolith. It seemed to be made of a dark metallic alloy unlike any material known to exist naturally on the moon, or even on Earth. Engineers assumed it might be an ancient meteorite fragment. But spectrographic analysis returned impossible data. The alloy's molecular composition didn't match anything in our databases. No naturally occurring elements matched its exact weight and resonance profile. As scientists argued over the data, the rover transmitted images that changed everything. The object wasn't just geometric. It was clearly manufactured. Six-sided panels, lined with what looked like microscopic etchings, too uniform and regular to be random. The surface reflected light differently than lunar rock. Some described it as a dull mirror, others as something closer to obsidian with metallic undertones. The rover was ordered to continue its scan, but that's when something even more disturbing occurred. An electromagnetic pulse, brief but measurable, emitted from the object. The pulse wasn't strong enough to damage equipment, but it scrambled part of the communication stream back to Earth. For nearly seven minutes, the feed went dark. When it resumed, the probe's orientation had shifted slightly, as though it had been moved, or nudged, by something. Ground control assumed it was a software error. But telemetry didn't lie. The rover had not followed its programmed course. That's when all external data from the mission stopped. No public updates. No press conferences. The Chinese National Space Administration went completely silent. The live feed from the rover was cut permanently. A generic message was posted, claiming the mission had encountered unexpected terrain instability, and that further operations were postponed pending safety analysis. But behind the scenes, international observers were already paying attention. NASA, ESA, and even amateur astronomers around the world began monitoring the region of the moon where the anomaly had been detected. Over the next few days, a series of low-frequency radio signals were detected, originating not from Earth, but from the exact location of the Chang'e 9 lander. These weren't random bursts. They were patterned. Structured. Some formed repeating sequences of prime numbers. Others encoded binary data that, when converted, formed strange geometric arrangements. One pattern, in particular, repeated every 147 seconds without deviation. Scientists from multiple countries began to compare the signals to historical data, including the famous, wow, signal detected in 1977. This one was stronger. More organized. And its proximity to Earth made it far more alarming. If the signals were a form of communication, they weren't coming from the depths of space. 
They were coming from just 238,000 miles away. Then came the leak. A Nobel Prize winning physicist, whose identity was protected by international media, published a brief but shocking statement through a European journal known for whistleblower publications. He claimed to have been part of a team that reviewed early data from the Chang'e 9 discovery. His warning was simple and direct. This is not a geological formation. This is not a relic of a past collision. This object beneath the lunar surface is artificial. It is operational. It is not sending random signals, it is responding to observation. The physicist claimed the structure beneath the moon might be a kind of dormant beacon or monitoring station, long and active until the recent probe reawakened it. He further explained that the pulses and signals could be interpreted as a form of activation, or worse, a response mechanism. International concern grew rapidly. NATO briefed its senior intelligence analysts. NASA accelerated its Artemis program plans, and classified meetings were reportedly held within the United Nations. China, meanwhile, offered no response to outside inquiries. Satellite data showed unusual levels of activity around its space research facilities. Some speculated they were preparing for a second, secret mission to the moon. A second, more detailed signal was detected roughly three weeks after the initial discovery. This one was stronger, pulsed in a pattern that mirrored the Fibonacci sequence, and included strange modulations across the radio band, something no natural formation could produce. Astrophysicists now considered a possibility that had once been relegated to science fiction, that we had stumbled across a non-human artifact on the moon. Questions erupted. Had someone or something left it there long ago? Was it placed to observe Earth? To protect something? Or was it waiting for a trigger? Was the Chang'e rover the trigger? What followed were strange disruptions. Observatories across Europe and North America began reporting difficulties in scanning the moon's southern hemisphere. Telescopes recorded unexplained energy signatures near the area of interest. Some were brushed off as solar interference. Others weren't so easily explained. One observatory in Chile recorded an intense infrared burst lasting less than 0.3 seconds. The burst was localized, directional, and perfectly aligned with the Chang'e 9 landing zone. Anomalous data was also recorded from orbiting satellites. One, in particular, detected a brief shift in the moon's gravitational field. Not enough to be dangerous, but significant enough to raise eyebrows. Private space companies also began to take notice. SpaceX, Blue Origin, and others started rerouting their planned lunar trajectories. Independent lunar probes were proposed to verify the findings, but strangely, no launch has yet been confirmed. Some insiders speculate that governments are deliberately holding back. Behind the scenes, diplomatic tension increased. The United States, Russia, China, and the European Union all quietly moved resources to prioritize lunar observation. Military satellites were reportedly repositioned. For the first time since the Cold War, lunar activity became a classified topic in global defense circles. More startling, however, was the claim from the Nobel physicist that the structure might not be alone. Deep penetrating radar data from the probe hinted at the possibility of interconnected voids, cavities beneath the surface, possibly containing similar objects. He described it as a network or array extending beneath the lunar crust. If true, this could mean the moon has been hosting alien technology not just for years, but for eons. The structure may not just be a singular artifact, it could be part of a global scale system, dormant until now. Finally, came the question no one wanted to ask. If it's technology, is it still watching? And more importantly, who does it belong to? Are we dealing with an ancient civilization that passed through our solar system long ago? A monitoring station set up to observe intelligent life on Earth? Or could this be something far more complex, an automated system still waiting for instructions? The idea of alien surveillance has existed in fringe science for decades. But this discovery moved the conversation from fringe to formal. Leading astrophysicists, engineers, and defense analysts now accept the possibility that we may have triggered contact without fully understanding what we've awakened.
To this day, no official confirmation has been made. China has neither denied nor acknowledged the claims. But the Nobel physicist's final words still echo throughout the scientific community. What we've found on the moon is not a rock. It's not a meteor. It's a message. And whether it was meant for us, or meant to be left undisturbed, only time will tell. But one thing is certain. We are no longer the only ones watching the sky. This is Space Loop. And if the moon has been hiding secrets all this time, maybe it's time we ask, what else lies just beyond our reach? <laughs>